Hi, I'm Mary Fox, author of the book My Life as a Potter and founder of Mary Fox Legacy Project. So today I'm starting on a new adventure. I'm creating a series of videos showing how I produce my tableware. In these videos, I'll be bringing you into my studio, showing you a little bit of uh, everyday studio life here, demonstrating how I create the forms that I create. Now the concept for this came about one night when I was thinking about the legacy project is something I do often. And I was thinking about the resource library for the project in the future. And I thought, gosh, it would just be so amazing if I had a series of videos available to the potters that come after me that they could access to see how I produce the tableware. Why did I decide on that form? Why did I name it the way I did? All, the, all these different little tidbits and things. And then I thought, well, gosh, why don't I make those available to the potters of today? Put each episode up on my website, put a donation button there so that they could donate to the project because I have a lot of grandiose plans for the project and for that I need to raise a lot of coin. So if you enjoy the videos, which I, I hope you do, and if you can afford to, then at the end there'll be a button and uh, you can donate. So today I'm going to start with my small bowls. One of the more simple forms. I don't want to start you out with something really challenging because, you know, that'd be kind of like kneecapping you. Uh, let's start gentle and then each episode we'll sort of ramp it up a bit and we'll move into some of the more challenging forms. Over the years I've made, oh my god, how many different styles of bowls have I made? Many. And I've settled on these three. The, the small bowl, the manly bowl, and the extreme manly bowl. Well, originally they were called the one pound bowl, the two pound bowl, and there was no three pound bowl. I thought, gosh, it's kind of like, you know, kind of a boring name. I don't have a name for the small bowl. I still call it the small bowl. Then there's the manly bowl. So this was one pound wet, this is two pounds wet. And then they nicely nestle inside each other. And uh, this is, I, I like to say, uh, big enough for the man's breakfast, lunch, and his dinner, or very nice as just a serving bowl if you don't, you know, eat that much. Because I make these, these are all one pound apart, they uh, nest very nicely. And I'm the kind of person that likes to dress up my food. So I used to make a lot of my bowls a little bit deeper, and, and the deeper bowls do have, like these are actually the same weight wet. The, the deeper bowls do have a, a, a function. Of course, a lot of people like this size as well. But why I gravitate to this size is that you have a much larger surface to decorate your food. So, uh, you know, to put your garnish or whatever, like people like to plate their food these days. And when you have a nice wide surface, then you can put a nice little thing right in the middle. And it just, you know, takes your dining experience up a notch. And beauty is everywhere in the act of creation. Then creating your lunch is an act of creation and make it beautiful. But I digress. Shall we go make some pots? Should we go into the creation room? I think so. Ah, perfect. So we're going to be doing uh, one pound, two pounds, and three pounds. Actually, sometimes, <laughs> so I'm saying I'm only doing one pound, and I am, but sometimes with the one pound bowls, uh, I just find, I sometimes go just a tad over one pound. Um, not one and a quarter, but one and an eighth. Just a tad over, there we go. So I find that it's just a little easier on my hands instead of pounding it into a, a ball, I'll just go like so. And then I do that because that just curves the bottom nicely. So when you slap it on the bat, it goes on really nicely. And let's go for three pounds. Oh, right on the money. All right, now what is this ugly green thing you say? Um, it's called a bat grabber. At least it used to be called that. Don't know what they're calling them these days. 
uh, and it's very handy. It's, it helps stop bat warble. So you just get it wet, bring it down, and then it just holds your bat nicely in place. So for the first bowl, I'm just going to go with a small bat like this, and then we'll move up. Okay. That's my sponge, my tools of the trade. I'm going to use a few different ribs while we're working today. Let's see. Bum, 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 bum. We're throwing with an iron rich clay today, so whenever I'm working with an iron rich clay, I like to have a, a little piece of a chamois just to go over the, the rim, just to take the, that bit of grog down a bit. And oh, there we go. So we have some very nice tools from Mud Tools. Michael's tools are, are gorgeous, love them. Uh, this one I use, this I've been using for years, uh, but it may be a bit challenging for some potters because it's very, it's very easy for that little point to get caught. Uh, so you may find it, I use that on the outside, you may find it easier using these. But anyhow, let's get going. So to make these uh, stay in place, I find when it's really dry, I put a little bit of, bit of water there. Now, you'll notice that I don't actually cone the clay for my small pieces. That's because the clay is so beautifully mixed, it really doesn't need it. So it's center. So now that's ready to open. Now part of, like if I'm doing this bowls, when I'm doing the small bowls, I'll do, I'll do a dozen at a time. Then they're all, then it's really easy to put them into sets of four. One way to sort of notice the size of your bowl is take a look at the distance on your bat, right? So that's sort of giving you, that's a guideline. So for the one pound bowl, I've got just about an inch there. Now, a lot of potters complain about uh, wearing their fingers off and I see, I see photos on clay bodies all the time of bleeding fingers. Well, that's because we're pressing down on the bat. So um, you will end up getting a bit of a callus here, but just lift your finger up a little bit and I make just that little finger there just makes that little curve in and that gives me a that's sort of like where my base is gonna start from so then let's open up and I go down to about a half inch from the bottom and then I'm just pulling across with my thumb like that gently okay so a picture is worth a thousand words right let's just show you okay so get in there that much. So I've left that much for the bottom. What is that? Half an inch? Thereabouts? So that we can have a nice foot. So I've opened it up. Now I'm going to pull it. I've already done the bottom. I'm going to pull it across like this. Now this is a very nice fluid clay, this, I have to say. Do two pulls. So my second one there, I'm just uh, defining the shape a little bit, pulling it out, and now I'm starting to pull it upwards. All right, so there's our basic shape. It's done now. And you can see on the inside, it's, it's, all, it's not very smooth yet. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of us like how the glaze looks on the, the throwing rings. But one thing I've learned over time is if you have really deep throwing rings, uh, they tend to, they get dirty, they stain, uh, people don't wash their dishes very well. Uh, so I, I actually, you can put the throwing rings back in afterwards if you want on a very, a very light level, but I like to smooth them off because uh, I'm always thinking about function. So now I'm going to do the outside of the bowl. I need a little water there to lubricate my hand. And this is where I use this rib, which I think you guys are actually going to find challenging, but um, maybe I should use the other one. Well, maybe I'll use the other one on another ball. So I'm just one finger there on the inside. Just going over, just taking off those rings, making it nice and smooth. Okay, so now that part is done. I'm going to do the inside. So we're going to take one of these. We'll use the medium sized kidney. And notice how I'm supporting my hand here. And I'm going to slow the wheel down a bit. And I'm 
I'm putting pressure pretty much at this end and I'm working down as I go, okay? So there we go. And I'm just slowly moving the rib down. And then when I'm getting closer to the bottom, I'm starting to put a little pressure here and to take out those rims and make it a nice smooth finish. There you go. Now, because this is an iron rich clay, very groggy, I'm gonna go over it with the uh, kidney, the red one, just smooth off the surface a bit. And there we have bowl number one. Now, I'm gonna take the chamois, and I'm just gonna go over that edge, like so. Not super, everything's good. Now, save a little time when we're trimming later. So this, you can start on the outside to move in. I've already touched the bottom of the bat, and just then just hold it while it goes around. Pull it out. And then my very expensive uh, cutting wire, fishing line on a fork. And uh, there we go. So that's bowl number one. Then I have this little handy gadget to pull it out. That's number one. So now I'm gonna move to another bat for bowl number two. So, Cause we're gonna go wider. So once again, I'm just gonna take it down. Now let's take a look at the bat and see where we are. Okay, so you can see it's a bit, well, we've got a much bigger bat. We've got about a, just over, just over an inch there. Lots of room to move. And then going down again. Now I'm using both of my thumbs this time and I'm moving this way. Now, you don't, this is how I open it, but I have had times where my thumbs have gotten stressed and especially when we move up to the bigger weights, you won't do it that, open it that way. So you can just, you know, once you've got it open, just use your fingers to pull it over. And I'm just pulling straight outwards and then slowly up. Pull number one. Wet again. Do my second pull. And now we're sponge it out a bit there. Now I'll do the outside. Take off those rings. There we go. And starting at the top and working my way down. And slowly across and now once I get to the point where I know there's support under me, I'm pressing a bit more and just moving out those lines. Okay, so now we'll go with the other rib. Just make it nice and smooth. Over we go. Bim, bam, boom. We're done. Let's take care of that rough edge. Splendid. Now, needle tool. Okay, there we go. And the manly bowl. Bowl number one, bowl number two. So now, for bowl number three, um, I could throw it on this one if I need to, but I'd be coming right out to the edge of the bat. And I think for most of you, you would find that a little bit disconcerting. So I want you to do it on another size bat. 
So now we'll move up to the big guns. Damp. Bowl number three. Whack her down. Is it just, uh, you know, it really doesn't take much work to center it at all. It just flows into place. And you'll notice how easily and fluidly that clay got centered and I really didn't need to do a lot of work on it. That's, that's the beauty of having really well mixed clay. Now I'm going to, as before, spread it out and leave my little finger dent there. So basically you got the same shape as before. I'm not using my thumbs now because that would be too much of a strain on the joint. Now I'm using my hands. Pull it over just a little bit more. Okay. Now we'll do the, the pull. I've noticed, you know, I really don't have my wheel going that quickly. I think a lot of people like have the, I look at videos and I see people's wheels like they're going at the speed of light. <laughs> they <have> clay everywhere. <laughs> really don't need to go that fast. Really the, the, the wheels, you need the power in the wheels for centering, but when you're actually throwing, uh, slow it down. So now I'm doing my second pull. This is really the shaping one. There you go. The extreme manly. Okay, so now we'll go for the outside shaping. Oh, looks pretty good to me. Um, now I'm going to go with the slightly bigger tool. Gentle, gentle, gentle on that side. Well, comparatively speaking to what I'm doing now, and now I'm starting to up the pressure. Flatten it out. Nice and even. Smooth. There we go. That off. And now we'll move up to the slightly bigger tool. Like that. Through. Done. Now, get that last little bit there. Our needle tool. Okay, there we go. So, didn't I make that look easy? Three bowls just like that. Now, of course, we're going to have to, I'm going to show you how to trim them, uh, but uh, I'm getting a little bit peckish, so I'm going to go and make my uh, Lazy Potter's Lunch. Uh, what is a Lazy Potter's Lunch, you say? Oatmeal. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll trim. Okay. So here we are. We have the three bowls. I've taken these two off the bat and I've left that one there mainly because I want to show you something. And for the first two bowls, I usually use my Giffen grip. And I'm using uh, these beautiful uh, bison tools that uh, I only actually started using a couple years ago. I always used the other ones because I was too, uh, too frugal. So to trim these, you really don't have that much work to do because I already took a fair bit off with the uh, needle tool. And uh, oh, one thing I notice a lot on uh, social media posts is that the potters are complaining that they have a different grip and they've got trimmings all over the floor. Well, as you can see, that doesn't happen to me, but I also don't have my 
wheel going at the speed of light. Okay, so now let's do the inside. See how I'm always anchoring my hands? My hand is never free floating around. You always want to steady yourself as much as possible. Make sure that bottom's nice and flat. Now we'll make our foot. Uh, I'm gonna angle in there. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. So then I'm just gonna go down. Don't worry if you miss parts of this because I've got two more bowls to trim and you don't have to hit rewind. You'll see it in the next one. Okay, so there we go. Because we left the, a fair bit of clay down at the bottom, you've got a nice lift off to your foot. Sort of elevates the bowl when you have a nice, a nice foot like that. I, I always smooth off the surface of any clay because uh, you really do rip it open when you trim. But with the iron rich clay, it's even more important or you'll end up with a lot of pinholes. A little moisture there. All important signature. <sighs> nice. There we go, bowl number one. So now on to the uh, manly bowl, which this one you could trim on the bat if you like, but or you can use the, the Giffen grip either way. These are still fairly soft, so you gotta be careful when you're flipping them over. And careful when you're tidying up, you don't wanna squish them. There we go. So I think that's about the size of foot I want, so now I always just put my finger here and just hold it level. 45 degree angle and just press down a bit, straight down. So a little bit more. Now we'll go to the bottom. I like to put this in because at a fairly sharp angle. <laughs> if it's more upright, you, you're more aware of it. You, so this sort of gives you a little bit of an optical illusion. And then sometimes I'm like, okay, that's a little bit big. So let's just make the foot a little bit smaller. So kind of here, I just do a little fine tuning. Let's make that just a little bit more like that. Then I usually go back to my other tool at this point. And now to seal it up. Yeah. And do not miss this part if you've got a sandy or a groggy clay body or you will end up with pinholes. Smooth over the bottom a little bit. Now see how I go to lift this very carefully like so because you don't want to warp that edge. Flip her over. And there's the next bowl. Now for the final bowl, though I could use this machine. Uh, the tool rather. I'm going to... Uh, do this one on a bat. And there's a couple of reasons for doing that. One is if you go to lift this bowl up, uh, you do, it, once you're starting to get a wider form, you have a tendency to warp when you're lifting, right? So this way we don't warp. So you just put the, the bat over top, boom, 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 flip. I didn't cut this off beforehand, but usually it'll just pop off. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. And now that ring that I cut through, just, woof, there it is. 
Now, we go back. Put her back on the wheel. This is a nice little trick. So we got it in position. You don't want this to be sopping wet, but this will help as far as skidding off the, the bat, which doesn't happen much to me, but um, when I was beginning it sure, to do this, it sure did. So make a little damp spot here. Just a, not so much that your pot's gonna absorb a ton of moisture, just enough to stop it from going. Alrighty. Now these uh, bison tools, uh, if you use them, you've, I'm sure you've heard the horror stories. Don't drop your tools because they can break if they hit on a uh, certain angle. Uh, so that's why I put these nails up for my trimming tools, which I wish I'd done years ago. Because um, what it does is, is actually brings me back to always being mindful of your, your body and how you're using it. With these tools, every time I switch the tools, you'll notice I have to, instead of like staying at this position and grabbing another one where I'm not then sitting up, I have to sit up straight, go like this. So uh, if you've read my book, uh, in the chapter, Things I Wish I Knew as a, a Potter, I talk about how you need to move your body around frequently and not stay in one position for a really long time because that's when the injuries happen. So just simple things like this means I'm doing this way more often while I'm trimming my bowls instead of just staying in one position. And at the end of the day, those, those things add up. little steps and make a big difference in your studio practice. And now to take it off, I'll just go for a smaller bat. Just like so. Boom. Boom. And then I the butt. Just straight off. <laughs> All done. There you go. Okay. So, extreme manly, manly, and small. Maybe we should just call it the petite bowl. And uh, that's it for today in the creation room. Um, what will I make for you next time? Should it be heart bowls? Should it be mocks? I don't know. Tune in, find out. And uh, donate. Thank you. <laughs>